Hey, Thomas from Field Tennis. Today we're going to take a look at seven reasons why you may be struggling with the top spin stroke on your ground strokes, so forehands and backhands. Or in other words, why are you struggling with dropping the racket? Why aren't you dropping the racket? Why is the racket coming straight into the ball? And why aren't you producing top spin? Now, the reason why I'm making this video is because in most cases, when you struggle with topspin, you're trying to solve this problem mechanically as if the problem is mechanical, technical, but as you will see in today's video, most problems are mental. So let's dive in. So the first reason why you're not dropping the racket and you're struggling with topspin is that just because it's easier for your brain to calculate meeting of the ball when the racket approaches the ball horizontally. So if the ball is coming like this to me and I'm swinging upwards, that's much more difficult to calculate to, to meet the ball in the sweet spot than just swinging horizontally towards the ball. So in a way you're fighting your brain, which is trying to ensure that you hit a lot of sweet spots and it's easier for the brain to calculate like this. So I will demonstrate a few with my assistant Kaya. So if the ball is coming, it's much easier for me to hit the ball well if I just align the racket more or less at the same height of the ball. See, this is easier compared to coming here under the ball and then swinging up. Coming under and swinging up is much more difficult to calculate for the brain, so your brain will be fighting you a little bit and you have to insist on your own to swing under the ball and up on the ball. So the second reason why you're struggling with topspin is basically your fault. You are the one imagining a very low ball. You're imagining a very low fast ball. So when the ball comes, you are the one that wants to hit the ball very low like this, very close to the net. And so your body is simply going to do what you want to do and aim low. And so obviously it doesn't make sense to your mind and your body to drop the racket well below the ball if you're gonna hit the ball like this straight. So again, this is just your cause. You're causing that mentally, you're visualizing a low ball. If you visualize a little bit higher ball with a bit more loop, then it will be much more intuitive or natural to come under the ball so that you lift it. One more thing, even though we hit low, it doesn't mean we don't hit topspin. So at higher level tennis, a good player can hit topspin and also hit the ball low. So hitting topspin does not automatically mean that you hit a loopier ball, but at beginner and intermediate level, that is usually the case. So just to demonstrate to you, I'm going to hit quite a low ball with a lot of topspin. Okay, so this one I succeeded, <laughs> no more. So this was a, a low ball with quite a lot of topspin. So I just wanted to show you that you don't think that low ball means no topspin. It's just uh, maybe not so intuitive. But for you, if you're struggling with topspin, then you should aim higher balls. Topspin will come much more naturally. The third reason why you may be struggling with topspin is because you're not imagining it. So just because you drop the racket under the ball, you might be correcting mechanically or your coach might be correcting you mechanically and you are dropping the racket below the level of the ball. That doesn't yet mean you will hit topspin or a lot of topspin. You might hit a little bit of topspin, but not a lot of topspin. 
because what can happen is that you drop the ball and you don't imagine topspin. If you want topspin and you're not yet skilled at it and you haven't ingrained it, you have to imagine it. For a trained player, topspin is basically automatic, it's ingrained, it's always running in the back of their mind, unless they specifically choose a flatter ball. By default, they're always hitting topspin. Now, when you're learning topspin or trying to improve it, you will have to visualize it. So I'm going to show you now a ball where I'm going to drop the racket under the ball, but I will not hit topspin. See, this is not a topspin ball. I came under the ball and then I'm continuing with a slightly open racket face. So I'm not imagining topspin. So the ball is spinning, but barely, right? So if I want topspin, I need to imagine topspin. I have to visualize what the strings are going to do to the ball. I have to visualize applying topspin on the ball and then I will get some topspin. The fourth reason why you may be struggling with topspin is again mental, but quite a tricky one to overcome. I would call it 4A and 4B. So the main reason why you're struggling with dropping the racket is because you tense up the wrist too quickly. So as you go in your forehand or your backhand and you're approaching the ball, you're swinging. So I'll show here forehand, you're swinging. If your wrist is relaxed, then the racket is going to drop below the ball and then you will accelerate up. But if you go from the loop and you tense up the wrist here, you are now preventing the drop of the racket. So it looks something like this. So I go here and now I tense up my wrist. I'm not letting it drop. I tense up my wrist and I go forward and I'm not getting topspin. Just go forward. So even I want top spin, my wrist is preventing me because it's so stiff. So there are two main reasons why you do that. One is you want too much control. So you want a lot of control. You're kind of a safe player and you want a lot of control. And the other reason is, is exactly the opposite. You want to hit the ball very hard but you have the wrong idea. You're trying to hit hard instead of fast. It's much better to think fast in tennis because hard is going to kind of associate to you hard muscles and hard grip, tight grip and so on. So everything is hard. So when you're thinking about hitting the ball hard, you're tensing up. You want to hit the ball hard, you're tensing up and your wrist tenses up and you don't drop it. So it's much better to think about hitting the ball fast. I'm hitting the ball fast and loose and smooth and fluid and so on. So more like this way. And when you imagine the stroke as fast, fluid, smooth, then you will be softer. You will be more relaxed as you're approaching the ball and then your wrist is going to drop. Okay, reason number five why you might be struggling with topspin or not being able to hit it is again a tricky one to solve and one of the biggest problems on planet Earth when it comes to tennis and ground strokes and that is that you're hitting the ball late. Kaya. So when I hit the ball late, one more, when I'm hitting the ball late, the racket path is still quite horizontal. So if I show you like this, if I swing my forehand just naturally, so this same applies to one-handed backhand and two-handed backhand. If I swing naturally how the arm wants to go, you will see that in this phase of the stroke, so when I come down from the loop and I go here, in this phase of the stroke, the racket is moving horizontally more or less. So if I'm hitting the ball late, even if I'm kind of dropping the racket and I'm hitting the ball late, so within kind of my territory from that perspective, I'm hitting here, the racket does not have a natural upward path yet. 
So here it's moving like this, but if I continue going forward, you can see that here it's starting to go up. So your racket will naturally apply topspin to the ball if you're hitting a little bit more in front of you. You don't have to struggle with topspin, you then to try very hard to hit topspin, it's just automatic. So this contact point here, let's say neutral stance in front of my shoe, is going to automatically apply topspin to the ball and this contact point is not going to apply topspin or you have to try very hard to pull up from this part of the stroke, you have to pull up very hard in order to apply topspin and topspin is not fast and it's a lot of straining. So let me show you again the difference in contact points and then we're going to compare them. So this is hitting the ball late. So it's quite a flat ball and this is hitting the ball well in front. And I can feel that it's very easy to apply topspin because my racket is already naturally rising. It's already rising towards the ball and I just get topspin automatically. So the next reason why you might be struggling with topspin is because you're hitting a lot of balls at high contact point. That could be for various reasons. You might be standing too close to the baseline and you're, getting, you're playing with a player who hits with more topspin or more loopy balls and you're hitting the ball at this contact point. And when your intermediate player hitting at this high contact point with topspin is quite tricky. It's not easy. It's much easier to hit with topspin at this low contact point because your racket already has a natural low to high swing path. But when you're hitting the ball at this contact point, it's very intuitive for most players to just kind of swing straight or a little bit downwards. So if Kaya gives me a bit higher ball, what you will tend to do at this contact point, yeah, you will just tend to hit the ball straight and you will come like this. You will come like this on the ball and you will hit straight and it doesn't come very intuitive to you to hit topspin. Now it is possible to hit topspin from higher ball, yeah, even this one. Yeah. I can hit topspin on a higher ball, but it requires a certain skill because for most players, when they swing up on a higher ball, they will tend to open the racket face a little bit too much, and then the ball is going to fly out. So that might be initially a problem. Eventually, it's good to master this skill of hitting topspin at higher contact point. But if you are struggling at the moment with topspin, don't hit balls at this high contact point because you will find it very difficult to apply topspin. Stand further back if you play with players that give you more loopy elbows. Stand further back, let the ball drop so that it's much more natural and intuitive to swing up on the ball. So if I get a lower ball, if I get a lower ball, it's much more natural and easy to apply top spin on this ball than on high contact ball. So only now I would come to the seventh reason why you're struggling with top spin, which is technical mechanical. So first we have to ask ourselves, why have you acquired such a forehand or a backhand that doesn't have top spin? Now in most cases it's because you play a lot of matches that put you in a lot of difficult conditions. So you're receiving very fast balls very low and fast skidding balls, you're receiving high balls, you're running around, you're all the time under pressure, so when you're under pressure, you're gonna go for the forehand and go quickly forward, because coming under the ball and up takes a little bit more time, the swing lasts a bit longer than taking a shortcut here and swinging forward, 
So if you're a lot under pressure playing a lot of matches, especially on fast surfaces, or playing a lot of high contact points, then you will automatically develop a stroke that doesn't have, have much topspin. Now, of course, a, a skilled player can apply topspin in all these conditions, but that requires a higher skill and you need to take step and step by step progressions to, to reach that level, which means you have to start at a lower level in much easier conditions. So easier conditions are slower balls and lower balls. And another one that I want to show now with Kaya is if you have a partner or a coach or a ball machine that can do that, is that it gives you a slow slice ball. So when I'm receiving a slow slice ball, then it's very easy to hit it with topspin. But when I'm receiving a topspin ball, and especially fast topspin that's bouncing up fast, then it's quite difficult to apply topspin. So we'll try to demonstrate. So Kaya, can you give me first a bit faster topspin forehand? Yeah. So if I'm receiving a fast forehand ball, then it's quite tricky to apply topspin on this ball because this ball's coming very fast like this and I need to go like this up with the racket. And it's quite tricky to get sweet spot. Now if I get a slower slice ball, so receiving a slow slice ball is the easiest conditions, easiest condition at which you can start practicing and working on your topspin. So when you're struggling with topspin, you must start with first easy conditions and then work your way up to more difficult. So this one is perfect, see? And this one very easy to hit with topspin. So in conclusion, the point of this video was that if you're struggling with topspin, do not uh, attack your technique just mechanically. You have to understand that most of the reasons why you may be struggling with topspin, meaning not dropping your racket head, is mental. You have, there are mental reasons, like I explained to them, wanting to hit the ball low, your brain wanting to hit more horizontal, approach the ball more horizontally, and so on. And so if you do not address the mental reasons and you're just trying to correct your stroke mechanically, like you're somehow incorrectly programmed robot, that's not going to work because your mind is still going to run the same program. And so mechanical corrections are not going to work in the long term. So it's very important that you imagine the topspin correctly, like I explained in this video and others, you have to imagine topspin work on it, feel it, and then if you start with mechanical corrections, then they're going to stick. So very important that you visualize the stroke correctly. Now I've linked in the description a few videos that I've recorded in the past where we talk about how to work on topspin and also fundamental conditions, so fundamental rally conditions that allow you to develop top spin naturally so some of those are standing further back waiting for the ball hitting at low contact and so on so you will get links to these videos in the description thanks for watching and i'll see you next time